Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Can everyone hear us okay? Okay. Um, so we're just gonna kick things off. I'm Pam Grossman. I'm the Director of Visual Trends for Getty Images, and I'm joined here by Elena Rossini, an incredible young filmmaker um, behind a film called The Illusionists that if you haven't heard about already, you're going to be clamoring for your iPads and iPhones in a moment. Uh, she's really incredible. And today we're gonna be talking about images, visuals, how they can help us repicture a better, more equal world. So without further ado. I'm going to be showing you the first four minutes of The Illusionist. I'm starting now. Well, there they are. Our new electronic media, or our new gadgets. You push a button, and the world's yours. You know how they talk about the world getting smaller? Well, it's thanks to these that it is. Everywhere is now our own neighborhood. But not only is the world getting smaller, it's becoming more available and more familiar to our minds and to our emotions. The world is now a global village. A global village. see the selling of the westernized image as the badge of modernity in India, in Singapore, in China, in Japan, where the notion of how you join globalized culture is the taking of a western body. There is one of those trends happening where we are trying to embody this westernized, modernized image because that's where power comes from. Power in society, power in the western world, power in your job, power with your own beauty. Ce blanchir la peau, en tout cas ce qu'on appelle le décapage, est devenu pas banal mais pratiquement. If you walk around the streets of Lebanon, I think you'd realize that most people look the same, specifically people from a certain social class that have the money to have this many surgeries. あの、私が思うことは、えっと、アニメでも、ま、モデルでも、理想化された身体になるっていうことに、えっと、日本の女性たちは脅迫されているように感じるんですけれども、そこの I can remember when I was a high school student that body image was just not a concern. Nobody in those days worried about whether they had a six-pack of abdominal muscles or faithfully went to the gym six days a week. It just was not an issue when I was a teenager. It's often seemed to me that a person who feels happy and secure isn't going to be a very good consumer because that person isn't going to be looking for products to shore up uh, the self-image or to feel better about oneself. just now are the first four minutes of The Illusionist. The full film is 90 minutes long. It's gonna be, uh, it's almost done. I'm looking for a celebrity narrator, um, um, a guy, because 85% of the interviews are women. Um, but otherwise, it's fully finished, and I'm hoping that it's going to premiere next spring. 
um, I was just telling Pam the story behind the making of the film, and she said, it's so fascinating, you have to tell it. Um, so the inspiration came about six years ago. I was really bothered by the fact that in media or advertising, I kept seeing images of women that I found to be very stereotypical and objectified and sexualized, and they didn't really reflect uh, what I knew to be real life, because I know many extraordinary women. Um, and I felt that those women were not represented really in the media or advertising. And so my mantra has always been, if there's something that bothers me, instead of complaining, I'm probably better off turning that into a project. And I decided to start working on the film. Um, when TV stations wouldn't give me the time of day, or when they would say stuff like, oh, we love your script and your idea, but you should remove all the experts that you want to interview, and you should put yourself in the film receiving beauty treatments. And I was like, that is not the film that I want to make. <laughs> it's quite different. Um, and so I decided to do crowdfunding. I raised the money for the film on Kickstarter. Uh, and then I ended up doing pretty much everything myself. So everything that you see, I, I was fundraiser, producer, cinematographer, director, editor, uh, art cover researcher, and I even did the motion graphics for the film. So like <laughs> everything that you see. <laughs> So I'm very proud to say this is what a filmmaker looks like because I'm usually not taken seriously as a filmmaker. Like, um, voila. And um, so one of the central themes of The Illusionist is we always hear um, the adage, sex sells. Uh, we are constantly surrounded uh, by ads that often show very you know, sexualized uh, women, uh, but actually, I think that a far more potent marketing tool is insecurity. Um, and in The Illusionist, I talk about the fact that in the early days of advertising, most of the ads would have very long explanations about a product's features and functions. So this was probably in the early you know, 1900s. Um, but soon enough, advertisers and marketers, they realized that uh, it's a lot easier to sell to people um, if you really tap into their subconscious, their fears, anxieties, and desires. Um, and in The Illusionist, I talk about the fact that there is a three-step process that you see across the board in advertising and mass media. Censorship, manipulation, saturation. Censorship in the sense that we really do not see images of real bodies. Often, uh, you have bodies of you know, women that are uh, stick thin, uh, with flawless looking skin, uh, very young. Um, and so after censorship comes manipulation. The models or actresses that are chosen to appear in media and advertising um, the, actually, their image is manipulated uh, to make them look even more, you know, unattainable. And the third step is saturation. We see a saturation of images of those idealized bodies all around us every day. Um, we're exposed to about 3,000 ads on any given day. And in addition to seeing those unattainable bodies, we also see images of ads that promise us that by buying those products, we can look this way. And the illusion that I talk about in the film, because it's called The Illusionist, is that if you buy this product, um, you're going to you know, be beautiful and complete and happy. But uh, it's just an illusion, because I mean, even Cindy Crawford famously said once, even I don't look like Cindy Crawford. So when Kat Gordon had the inspired idea of putting us together in dialogue, um, we were both really thrilled about it because at Getty Images, we've been approaching this kind of from a different door, albeit the same issue. Um, stock photography, as presumably everybody in this room knows, is 
everywhere. We are surrounded by it all the time. I'm proud to say that Getty Images is the largest visual content provider in the world. Um, presumably, plenty of you are familiar with us and perhaps have worked with some of our content already. Um, that said, we were seeing that there is definitely a problem, not just in terms of body types that have been represented in imagery, but also just how women have been represented in, in imagery in terms of what we can do, what a businesswoman looks like. Um, are we really all defeated and exhausted all the time? Um, when we're shown being empowered, does it have to be this crappy? <laughs> Do we have to have boxing gloves? Do we have to have pink stilettos climbing a ladder of success all the time? Um, do we have to be laughing alone eating salad? <laughs> no, ladies. No, we do not. And at Getty Images, I'm uh, thrilled to say that we have a lot of fantastic content already that counteracts all of this. Um, but I'm really thrilled to, a bit later on, talk about um, a project that I've been working on to help address some of this kind of crappy imagery as well. OK, so the good news is that I've really noticed a sea change in the way that the public has been responding to big media makers and advertisers. I started doing this project, you know, researching and writing in 2008. And at the time, I felt that there was not that much of a conversation going on trying to rebel against those really stereotypical images. But slowly and steadily, I think it's like part thanks to the internet, the rise of social media, Twitter, um, I really did start noticing a lot of campaigns um, of ad busting, like the one that you see behind me, truly going viral and capturing people's imagination and support. So the image that you see behind me on the right hand side is a photographer from Berlin, David Source, who basically said, I'm really tired of seeing this unattainable bodies, this like impossible images of women. And so he decided to create stickers of the Photoshop tools and to put them on billboard ads like all around the city to kind of remind people, maybe those are not real bodies. Maybe they've been retouched. And those images went viral. It received tons of support and letters from people saying, thank you so much, because we always feel like we don't measure up to the images that we see every day. And um, another example, OK, so when I started like working on the film, I connected with a lot of activists um, that work you know, in women's empowerment, girls' empowerment, body image. Um, and last year, uh, a lot of my activist friends, they came together and they created an alliance, uh, the Brave Girls Alliance. And what they decided to do was truly revolutionary. Um, they did a crowdfunding campaign. Um, they raised $26,000, and they were able to buy ad space in Times Square. And the objective that they had was to broadcast positive messages um, to women and girls in the most iconic you know, ad space, like probably in the world. And they encouraged their Twitter followers to send them tweets um, that that would be rebroadcast. And they had massive amounts of success. So you really see a lot of activism pretty much making a dent in the culture and changing the conversation. And another example that I really love is like the uproar um, behind the Disney makeover of Merida. Um, because I love the film. Um, you know, she was like a very brave, incredible character. And Disney decided to unveil a new website where there was a series of princesses and uh, Merida got a makeover. Um, she looked very much sexualized um, with you know, her breasts like almost out and like dressed in like, a skimpy dress. And parents were horrified by this. And so a woman decided to create a petition on change.org, encouraging people to sign and really tell Disney that this was not okay. 
And in the span of a very short time, I would say probably like a couple of days, they were able to get 250,000 signatures. And so Disney responded and said, okay, okay, <laughs> calm down, we're gonna go back to the original one. And again, I, I feel that the accountability that companies have nowadays in the age of social media, it's something unprecedented and absolutely amazing. We really do have a voice and the possibility to speak up if we see something that bothers us. So we've entered a really incredible age, I think, of visual culture when it comes to females. And I'll just fly some, through some of these since I think I'm preaching to the choir here a little bit. Um, but the fact that we are seeing so many women on the world stage right now, the fact that we have my best friend Beyonce, <laughs> On the VMAs, you know, not only flashing the word feminist behind her for so many millions of people to see, so many millions of kids to see, but also defining it for everybody. Um, a golden age of television with the rise of a new female protagonist who's not only a wife, only a mother, only a love interest, but somebody who's complicated, messy, who's telling her own story. And when we're starting to see box office stats that support um, that when a film passes the Bechtel test, the test that ha you know, a film has to have two female characters in it who have a name, who talk about something other than a man to each other, that films that pass the Bechtel test actually bring in much more uh, box office money. From a Getty Im Images perspective, my role is to study our data, it's to study visual culture in general, and to work with our 40,000 contributors around the world to create content for the site, so that hopefully if I'm doing my job well, we have images on the site before everybody in this audience even knew that they needed them. Um, I have access to all kinds of juicy, juicy data like what you have on the screen, which allows me to make arguments and persuade our photographers to shoot the kind of content that we think is going to sell well. Things like our top search terms, which for the last four years have been, in this order, woman, family, business. Um, we've seen remarkable change in a really short span of time in terms of our top selling images. And I love to look at top selling images of women and see how they've changed over time. So what you see on the screen is our top selling image of a woman in 2007 looking very passive and objectified and maybe drugged, I don't know. Um, she is naked, she doesn't have very much to do, as opposed to just five years later, um, where she's still attractive, what we would call aspirationally attractive, uh, but in a much more relatable way. She's on a train, she's going on a journey, she has forward momentum in her life, and she gets to wear clothes, which is very exciting. <laughs> Here you have our top selling image of a woman from last year. We don't even care what she looks like in this image. We care that she is doing something, presumably taking over social media. And here's our top selling image so far this year, and uh, we only have a couple months left, so we'll see if this uh, is true by the end. But what I love about this is, you know, um, especially in our industry, there used to be this belief that you always had to stick a woman in a bathing suit. Well, if you stick her in a bathing suit, she can still be powerful and strong and agile and tell a phenomenal story. I also have access to all kinds of sales data, like what you have on the screen in this really hideous slide. Um, but essentially, what this is showing is that of our top selling 1,000 images globally, images keyworded woman have gone up, and images uh, uh, keyworded man have gone down, as simple as that. This is what people are buying from us and what they want to see. So I have to make darn sure that the images of women that we're creating are relevant um, and that they're also telling a really powerful visual story, whoa, um, like the one I'm going to tell you right now <laughs> about the Lean In collection. So you can go ahead and blast that. Thanks.
um, folks in this room are familiar with what the Lean In Collection is. Um, in short, it is a project that we've done with Sheryl Sandberg and her nonprofit Lean In. Um, I had the phenomenal opportunity to meet with Cheryl to share with her some of the data and the stats that we were seeing, some of the trends that we were tracking, and some of the phenomenal content that we already had created on GettyImages.com. Um, she was so thrilled by what we already had in our collection that she really wanted to help us amplify um, and spotlight these more powerful depictions of women, of of girls, of men, um, so that folks in creative industries like you will more easily be able to find it on our site. And so together we can seed the world with these improved, more powerful, more empowering images. Uh, what you'll find in the collection are images of girls who are not wearing pink, they're not playing princess, not that there's anything wrong with that. But they are raising their hand, they're speaking up, they are using computers, they're skateboarding. Um, we have a lot of images of women as leaders in the workplace. Um, I curate this collection every month by hand uh, with a partner from Lean In who's named Jessica Bennett. She's actually a tremend tremendous women's journalist as well uh, who also works at Lean In. And together we have all kinds of debates about what image is good enough for the Lean In collection, what, what makes the cut. Um, and so when we're analyzing an image like the one in the top left, certainly we want to have images of men in this collection too, but we want them to be listening. We want them to be partnering. We want them to be collaborating. So it's all these visual cues we take into account. It was also very, very important for us that we have images of family life, of home life. Um, we've spoken so much today about how to balance this. Um, and Cheryl is very, very fond of saying that in her ideal world, 50% of all governments and companies are run by women, and 50% of all households are run by men. So we want to show what that looks like. We want to show what nurturing dads, emotionally available dads look like, in addition to all different kinds of families, same-sex families, single-parent families, adopted families and so on. And we want this to be inclusive. We want it to be as diverse as possible from a body type, body ability, age, color, um, sexual orientation, size, everything standpoint. Um, so when you go to the Lean In collection, to my mind, it's like this beautiful microcosm of what an idealized <coughs> world looks like, of the world we're all trying to build together. When we launched this collection, it was a really big experiment for us, and we weren't sure how successful it was going to be. We've talked a lot today about metrics, about sales, about this not just being, um, as Hillary Clinton is fond of saying, a moral issue, but it's an economic issue. And I'm thrilled to say the Lean In Collection has been such a huge success, being licensed in over 50 countries around the world, in places like Slovenia and Qatar, um, and that sales of images in the Lean In collection are up 66%, which is really, really exciting for us. And I have a background in anthropology, so I love to nerd out and see which Lean In images are selling in which <coughs> countries and why. Um, it tells such a compelling story. This is our top selling image in the United States. Um, and to my mind, this is an image of a man and a woman working together, if you'll pardon the pun, on equal footing. Oh my god, I'm sorry. Um, this is our top selling image of a woman in Brazil, a small business owner who has her own great style. Um, there's been a, a lot of discussion, uh, certainly in the media and in, in my personal life, frankly, around how, how do we present ourselves as women? Do we have to be wearing the power suits and all that? Um, absolutely not. Top selling image in Japan, um, we've had a lot of photographers, I'm going to be honest, who in the past were afraid to have business women only in an image. Would an image like this sell? Don't you need a man in there as well? Um, you absolutely do not. Women can have meetings without men, and we can have pictures of those women. <laughs> Top selling image of uh, uh, a lean-in image in China. Um, I love this image, an image about pre precision, skill, certainly someone working in the, the STEM industries. And lastly, our top-selling image in South Africa, which I think speaks so beautifully uh, to the earlier presentation just now about empowering girls around the world, about educating them, about letting them um, gain skills so that they can become the leaders of tomorrow. Um, I want to thank the, the, all the companies that I'm about to show right now uh, for allowing us to share that they, in fact, are using Getty Images content in, in their campaigns for these. Um, 
we have Symantec who licensed uh, this image from Lean In, um, which I think is wonderful. A little Photoshopping there, but not about body type. Adding a table, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> We have Scotia Bank, uh, who licensed this lean-in image, and I love that not only is she in the corner office owning it, literally leaning in, um, but that tagline, richness is getting to do math all day. Visa using content from the Lean In collection for their recent commercial all about inclusivity. Um, we're really honored to be included in this inclusivity campaign. Um, and finally, we're seeing a lot of these images populating places like Huffington Post. Um, we got a lot of feedback from journalists who were saying, you know, I want to write feminism, I want to write articles about empowered women, and yet all I'm finding are these stupid pictures of women in boxing gloves and stilettos and laughing alone eating salad. Um, so it's thrilling to see these images showing up and helping to illustrate these, uh, these stories. But I want to tell you the most heartening thing for me. Um, certainly, getting these sales metrics is phenomenal, and it just allows us to grow the collection. We're creating new content for it. We're growing it every single month. Um, but you know, I don't think it's a secret that Getty Images traditionally has been a B2B. Ever since we launched this collection, I cannot tell you the amount of emails, comments, phone calls we've gotten from the general public inundating us, thanking us, telling us how much this project means to them, telling them how thankful they are that we are taking a stand in this and, and helping to um, repicture this more equitable world together. Um, to hear from the female fire chief of Ontario, um, you know, giving us a round of applause remotely is just um, it's just so galvanizing and moving. I don't ever expect her to necessarily license from us, but I'm so thrilled that she took the time to tell us how much it means to her. I think it's like a really exciting time. Um, I have friends from all over the world that wanted to help me with the illusionist. So on any given day, we're receiving emails with the subject line, I saw this and I thought of you. I open it, it's like the most horrifying, like sexist like, type of ad, and I'm like, <laughs> oh dear God. <laughs> but more and more, like especially in the last couple of years, it has been examples of ads like this one, um, that I think it was originally from the Philippines, uh, from Pantene, and um, I started to notice really so many more empowering images of women in advertising, so things are changing for the better. Um, advertisers and like big corporations are taking a stand against Photoshop. They've realized that those unattainable images are really not serving anyone. And in this like, really famous campaign by Air, like they essentially didn't want to retouch the model. Uh, we saw the example earlier today from the Verizon ad. Um, and again, amazing photos of you know, women in positions of power. It's something that even five years ago, I think it would have been like, really hard to see. Um, this is another campaign that I absolutely loved uh, by Always, that they were trying to essentially reappropriate like a girl and put a positive spin on that. And that really captured a lot of people's imagination. And I think this ad got um, about 40 million views on YouTube to this day. And I've also been seeing a lot of positive images of men, of fathers. Um, to have traditional mommy brands, quote unquote, like a Tide, showing that dad, in fact, can do the laundry, that he's not always the one to like spill a chili dog down the front of his shirt like a buffoon, <laughs> but he can actually uh, be capable and be a competent member of his family, um, I think is, is a really heartening sea change. Whirlpool, Johnson & Johnson, there's a recent Cheerios commercial, How to Dad. Um, and I think all of these are ingredients uh, in this recipe towards you know, creating, creating this more equitable world. So at the very beginning, you know, I talked about how insecurity sells. And I think that we can make like a very persuasive point that empowerment is an amazing selling tool. Uh, when Dove introduced their real beauty campaign, their sales went up 700% within a month. 
and the success of the linen collection, you know, now with like 66%, you know, uh, improvement is just incredible. Um, so when I got invited to speak here, I was really excited because I'm used to talking to activists, but this is an amazing opportunity to talk to media makers um, because each and every one of you has the potential to be an agent of change and to make ads that instead of making us feel insecure, they make us feel empowered. Um, there's a quote that I love by Maya Angelou who said, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And so what I just want to say to you is, please make us feel empowered. Um, we see 3,000 ads a day. Those are like 3,000 opportunities for you, advertisers, to connect with us. And I feel that, I mean, if I see an ad that makes me feel empowered, I would be such a loyal consumer and evangelist for your brand. Um, so I think that there's a real opportunity here. Everybody, please um, follow what Elena is up to. I personally cannot wait for The Illusionist to come out. Um, and I'm sure we'll all be shouting it from the rooftops when it does. And I invite you all to check out the Lean In collection on Getty Images by going to gettyimages.com slash lean in. Thank you all so much. Thank you.